Hello and welcome. This is L.A. Rathbone and uh, welcome to the, the uh, very first video in my Slackware series. This is part one of part one, which uh, is going to be the series in which we go ahead and install Slackware. Um, I, I, this is my second attempt at recording this. Um, the first time that I tried, uh, my video was like 40 minutes long and, and YouTube wouldn't let me upload it. And also there are some synchronization issues, so I'm going to re-record it and see how, how it goes. I'll do it in multiple parts, about 15 minutes each. That should work and that should uh, appease the concerns of the YouTube people. So we're going to use Slackware 14.0. I'm running it in a uh, virtual machine, um, namely VirtualBox, um, because it's just easier that way um, for the purpose of this video. But uh, what you can do is go ahead and fetch the DVD ISO from um, uh, the Slackware FTP server um, or one of the mirrors preferably uh, or from BitTorrent go ahead and burn it on a DVD and then pop it in your machine and turn it on. I think you can also do a USB uh, boot or something but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm more old school. I usually do it with uh, with the DVD and uh, you can even do it with CDs. If there's six CDs you can burn them and, and go ahead and do that. But uh, I've got the DVD here um, on my virtual machine. So here we are at the very first screen here. They're, they're, they're asking us uh, how we want to uh, boot, which kernel we want, we want to boot. Now the default is huge smp.s. For probably 99% of people that's fine. Um, but uh, I'm only, my virtual machine is uh, one processor. So I don't need the SMP functionality. And also, um, if you're using the VirtualBox defaults, it doesn't have PAE emulation enabled by default, at least not on the version that I'm running here. So you'd run into, you'd run, run into difficulty if you tried to use the huge SMP.S. So, uh, you know, I'm not really going to get any, there wouldn't really be any disadvantages to using the SMP, the SMP kernel, but I'm just not going to. I'm going to use the huge.S and hit enter. And here we go. bunch of stuff on the screen here, you don't have to really worry about that. Um, this this video is mainly going to be for people that uh, have some familiarity with the command line, um, but uh, I, I, I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I go so that it's not too, too difficult to understand. Um, they want to know if I want to load support for a non-US keyboard. I don't. I'm just going to hit enter to use the default. And here we are. We are at the Slackware installation um, login screen. Now we can log in as root. Just type that, hit enter, and it'll it'll go ahead and give us a little message here. Now um, there's nothing special about this message. Um, it's it's just something that was put in there by Patrick Volgerding, I'm assuming, of the Slackware team. And um, anybody can go ahead and uh, put whatever message they want in there for a login. So. That file is located at uh, the etc et, et or etc for short directory, um, and it's located at MOT, MOTD. So we can do the ls and on there and see that it's actually there, and um, we can go ahead and open it up by uh, using the less command, less etc MOTD. And as you're typing um, uh, commands, you can hit the tab key after you've partially entered things in. So MOT tab will give me D because there's nothing else um, possible. So I hit enter and we're in the less pager viewing um, the MOTD file. So let's hit Q to exit the pager there. Oh, but something I forgot to show you. This pager can be very, very useful um, because uh, unlike more, it has, well, more features. Less has more features than more. Yeah, so one of my favorite features is to is the search command and you hit the forward slash key and then you type in your search uh, parameters. So partition, for example, it will then go ahead and show us all the um, iterations of the word partition. Um, so that's just a nice little thing to, to use there. Um, but uh, th I'll talk more about stuff like that in my later, later videos in the series, but uh, I'll, I'll try to point things out as I go along, even during the in installation process about the system. Um, so it told us that we uh, should run the setup utility, but it said that we should partition our hard drive first. Unlike other distributions, Slackware does not 
provide a partitioning uh, tool in its setup utility. Now, if I go ahead and run the setup utility, no, it's not sbin, it's just, where is setup? It's, it's in user lib setup setup, but that's not a usual path for binaries. Let's see if they put that in our path. Right, so um, the Slack word, you usually you have uh, user bin, user local bin, bin, and s bin in your path. And your path means places that binaries go where you don't have to type the full path to get to it. You can just type the actual name of the program. So setup uh, is in user lib setup, which um, you can see at the top of the uh, list of the files in your path there, that has been added to the path. So if I just type setup, it'll run. Just taking a second here. And um, I cheated a slight bit. Uh, I, I was hoping to show you that, uh, I, I was hoping to show you that um, if you run the setup utility without um, having partitioning done, then it will give you a warning. Um, but I, when I was doing my previous video, I did partition it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, delete all my partitions here, and I'll explain what I'm doing in a second here. M for help, how do I delete a partition? D, let's delete all of them. Okay, so I will write that, and I will... Okay, so now, now, I'll, now I'll try to run the setup utility again. And as you can see, you can't do it because it'll tell you that uh, you need to make a partition. It won't quit the installer um, because, you know, that's not really the Slackware way. They don't really force you to do anything, even if you're just completely shoot, uh, shooting yourself in the foot. But uh, let's do our partitioning now. Um, I usually use the program CFDisk um, rather than the plain FDisk to do my partitioning. But I'm going to use FDisk in this video. The, the, only, re the only real reason for that is because... Um, in the uh, video I was inspired by to do this, this guy, I can't remember his name, but I'll post it in, in the show notes, did a great video on how to install Arch Linux. And he uses CF disk in his video. So I figure if you want to use F disk and you want to learn how to use F disk, you can take a look at his video. But I'm going to use plain old F disk. Um, before I do that, um, you need to know what hard drive to run it on. Now, um, hard drives uh, in Linux, they used to have all your device nodes are in the dev directory. So I did ls dev to show you that. But they used to have a distinction between IDE and SCSI um, hard hard drive device nodes. Um, they used to call the the IDE drives slash dev slash hd and then a letter. So a would be the first one, b would be the second one, etc. Um, and then for SCSI, it would be S, D, A, B, C, etc. But they changed that. Now, now all your hard drives are, are dev, S, D, whatever. So if I type S, D, tab. Oh, look at that. Oh, there it is. S, D, tab. A was my only one because I'm running on a virtual machine. Um, and let's see if that is an actual. So I type ls-l to tell me more about the file. And it's, it is a device node. Um, you'll see later on that there are a lot of device nodes that are just links to other ones. But this is the device node for my hard drive. So I'm going to run fdisk. And you can't just run fdisk. If you do that, it just tells you how to use it. You have to write, you have to run fdisk and then the name of your hard drive device node. So dev sda. I don't have any partitions, so there's no numbers at the end of that yet. So, um, Changes will remain in, will, will uh, remain in memory only until you decide to write them. So you can change things around, and it'll show you. Okay, here's what your hard drive looks like now, but won't actually save any of your changes until you write them using the right command. So we type. Let's type M to see what our commands are, and you'll see P will print the partition table. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we see that we have nothing. Um, and you see my 12.9 gig virtual machine hard drive. Um, we want to make a new partition. Let's use the N key. And uh, let's, let, let's, have, let's have a bit of fun. Let's make a few partitions. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to make any more than four. 
So let's go ahead and do uh, primary. Let's make a boot partition. Um, it shouldn't need to be more than um, 100. Let's make it 150 megabytes. Um, but let's, uh, okay, default one for the partition number. It'll be our first one on the disk. Um, let's leave this as the default because we don't want to start our um, first partition past the, the first available sector. That wouldn't make any sense, so we'll hit enter. Um, and there, here's where you can specify uh, what size you want your hard your uh, partition to be. Now I'm going to use this uh, the functionality of F disk to specify it in megabytes as opposed to sectors. So I'm going to hit the plus key and I'm going to type um, 150M with a capital M and hit enter. And now I've got a uh, 150 meg uh, partition, SDA1. That'll be my boot partition. So we have to flag that as bootable. I don't think you really have to, but uh, on some older machines, you might need to. Uh, I'm just going to do it anyway because it doesn't hurt to have it. So we type um, A to toggle the bootable flag. Um, what partition number? Well, we we only have one, so we type one. And let's see. Now, we, now you can see the boot flag is enabled. You see that with the asterisk there. Now let's type uh, N again to create a second partition. Let's keep it a primary. Default two. That's fine first sector, that's fine. We will make um, a 256 megabyte swap partition. You could make it larger if you want. I don't think uh, it's really necessary in this day and age. They used to say, have your swap uh, partition be twice the size of the amount of RAM that you have. I don't think that's really ever been, been uh, necessary for Linux, but it's certainly not necessary. Now that we have people that have eight gigs of RAM and so on and so forth. So keep it under a meg. Let's just see now we've got our two partitions. Let's make another one. Whoops. And let's make another primary partition. Um, this will be our, um, let's see. Why don't we, because I'm running on such a small disk, I'm just going to use the rest of the disk on, on one massive root partition. You can make a home partition if you wanted to or a user partition or a user local partition, but I'm not going to bother here. If I had lots of space to work with, um, I could maybe make, a tw you know, even a, if I had a terabyte, for example, I'd maybe make 100 gigabytes uh, to, be, uh, to be root. Um, and home, I would make a fair bit larger because uh, um, that's where a lot of the, the actual files that people have go. And uh, I often make uh, a special... Um, partition called shared that, that goes amongst uh, people on my network um, and you want to make that one larger for sure but I'm not going to bother here because I don't have that much space to work with so I'm just going to use the default there I'm just going to make the first sector the first available one and the last sector the last available one taking up the rest of the disk I hit P I've got my three partitions but there's one little problem um, it uses on the right hand side system by default for all partitions I want my second partition to be a swap partition. So if we hit the M key, it'll tell us that we need to, to hit the L key. Or no, we need to, there it is, the T key to um, change the partition system ID. We want, we want to do that on our second partition. It's an L to see the codes. We want 82 Linux swap. P, that will now show us our Linux, our Linux swap, and our Linux. Perfect. So we hit the W key to uh, actually save those changes. And then FDisk goes ahead and exits itself. So um, that, is, uh, that is that in terms of partitioning goes. Okay. So I think that's about all the time I have for this video. I want, I'm trying to keep the video shorter so that YouTube doesn't, doesn't reject them on me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call it quits for this video. And um, when we return... Um, I will be actually running the installer. So, <laughs> 15 minutes gone, and I haven't even started the installation process yet, but that's uh, because I like to hear myself talk. So, that's it for this episode. I will see you next time. Good night and good luck.